Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, February the 23rd, 2021. My name is Jack Walmuck. I'm one of the pastors at Hope Community United Methodist Church. We're located in Pasadena, Texas. We started to do daily devotionals when we were no longer having face-to-face worship. But then uh, they just have continued because it's something I do in the mornings. As you can see, it's ding-donging that it's a quarter to seven. And uh, it just helps me focus. And then it gives me some accountability or responsibility to make sure that I do them at a specific time so we can get them recorded so you can participate with me. And so it's just been a way in a time of very little, uh, when things were just kind of willy-nilly any way you wanted, we didn't have church at the church. Uh, we couldn't, you know, couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't go out. You still can't do so many things. And, and so it was a way to give me some structure. So today I'm going to read to you from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, an interesting I think an interesting way to start our day. Uh, so the writer of Matthew says, "You've heard it say, you've heard it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat." Give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you. And do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You've heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Even the tax collectors do that. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. My friends, this is radical thinking. We live in a world where we much prefer an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. In so many ways, we have learned to justify using the same tactics that evildoers use to confront evil. And it's been my experience in the years of life that I have things really haven't changed that much. When I was in junior high and high school, you have to figure out that you're on your own. When I was in junior high and high school, Houston was called the murder capital of the world. My friends and I would go down to Allen's Landing on a Saturday night, downtown Houston, and you would hear gunfire. 
everybody wants to say it's so much worse now. The tensions between races, the tensions between culture, lifestyles, I don't know how they get resolved until we start to listen to Jesus when he says, you've heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Sometimes we say, well, yeah, but they don't really mean hate. Or do they? We don't. We don't really hate those other people. Or do we just find nice, fancy words to use to play the blame game? Say it's their fault. They're the ones with the problem. It's so easy for us to point fingers. They're the ones. And you know what? They look at us and say, they're the ones. And the contention begins. What about the times when we can say, we're the ones? And I think that's what Lent is all about. Oh, there are many, many problems in the world but I would pray to God that I wouldn't be one of them. That I would find ways to be less prejudiced, less discriminating, more loving, more accepting. Because I really think that's what it means when Paul says the gospel is not only free, but it frees us. Instead of looking at all the differences, we start to look at similarities. Even among Christians, we have these same contentions. Certain denominations don't recognize others. If you didn't get baptized the way we do it, it doesn't count. If you didn't come to Jesus in this church, you can't take communion. And even within a denomination. Well, if you believe that, you can't be with us. The only resolution is for us to go separate ways and have more division. And if anybody believes that's what Jesus will call for, lived for, died for, they haven't read the gospel. Jesus lives now. And he lived then and he was raised into heaven and he did it all for the sake of unification not division we humans have failed we don't follow we look in the distance at a glamorous heaven and say maybe I've done enough to get there well, here's the news. There's nothing you can do to get there. But there are certainly many things we can do, people, to keep us from getting there. It's all about God's amazing love and grace. It's about the grace of our Lord and see Jesus Christ. That grace is how we're saved. And it's through demonstration and living into that grace that we become children of God. Well, these are tough things to hear, but Lent is one of the times we ought to hear them. I think every single week that we gather until Easter, we need to remember that all of us, regardless of race, color, or creed, came from dust, and to dust we will return. And the only 
the only way that we can make any difference in the world is to repent and believe the gospel. Let's pray. Oh God, it would be my prayer today that we could all understand these words from the gospel of Matthew. That we could let go of our own stuff and live into your world, to your kingdom. The kingdom that you have told us is near. It is at hand. And we pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.